stuffing up in the world. Exactly. <laughs> okay, very similar to the problem we just did, but the difference is instead of just plain old x, it's now x squared. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I've never heard of it. Okay. If this is our fundamental theorem, our FTC part one only has plain old x. If this is anything other than an x, you do have to use the chain rule. Meaning I do the same process and plug it in, it would be cosine of x squared. I do that first. You plug it in, right? But you do have to multiply by the derivative. And let's work through this so you see why this works. What is my antiderivative here? Uh, negative sign. It's positive sign. Uh, oh, it's sign t evaluated from 1 to x squared, correct? Yes, no? Yes. Which is sine of x squared minus sine of 1. Yes? But I'm taking the derivative of that. So when I take this derivative, that's where I have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of the inside is 2x. Its derivative is going to be cosine x squared, right? You'll plug in the original. Yeah. The derivative of that is going to be 0. So we can shortcut it and simply plug it in and multiply by its derivative. Because that's where it's going to happen anyway. The derivative of this upper value of your interval. Are there any parts like in calculus where you don't have to use the chain rule but deviates from the original? Can't think of anything else because that's kind of a broad question. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. Yeah. Can't think of anything. Let's do another. Oh, I gave lots of room for that one. ddx, integral, x to 5, 3t sine t dt. Problem, our FTC says constant to a variable. This one has a variable to a constant. Make it negative. Flip it, make it negative. So this is actually just negative. 3x sine x. Right? If I flip it, I'm just to the regular old FTC. Part 1. Yeah. Let's do another. Way down there. We need lots of room for these. Now, this one is not on the AP test. They have flat out said they're not giving you one like this, but I want you to see it before you go to college. It's just one of the topics they'll leave to the BC calculus test. Uh, but it, they're easy. They're easy enough. So I want us to know how to do them. Think about it. We had our properties of integrals the other day. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the integral 0 to 2x. We know it's smaller because it's on the bottom, right? is x squared, and also if you square something, it's bigger than times u by 2 for the most part. There are some exceptions, of course. But if I want to know this chunk right here, it's exactly what I'm asking for, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take 0 to x squared, and I'm going to subtract out 0 to 2x. That's going to leave me the leftovers. So I'm going to break this integral up, and I want d dx, the integral... 0 to x squared, 1 over 2et, or 2 plus et, dt. Subtract out d dx, the integral of 0 to 2x, 1 over 2 plus e the t, dt. So basically I'm taking it from 0 because I want a constant, and 0 is the easiest constant. There's no real reason I pick 0. But 0 to x squared gives me the whole thing take out the 0 to 2x, I'm left with exactly what I want. Okay. So now it's a problem like we just did. If this is anything other than x, chain rule. So first plug it in, but then multiply by its derivative. What is the derivative? Uh, dx squared. No, just no, the derivative. Oh, uh, 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 2x, just the derivative of this. We don't care about the derivative of the actual function. 
minus, same thing here, plug it in. What's the derivative? Two. two. And all I'm going to do is clean that up. So I have 2x, two, 2 plus e to the x squared minus 2 over 2 plus e to the 2x. Voila. And that method can be used anytime you have variable to a variable. So there's your earlier question, Luke, that we can have a variable to variable, we just break it up and use the FTC.